Viper Spectra has finally made the jump to large footprint bar lights with their new KS lineup, consisting of the KS5000, KS3000, and KS2500. The last review I did was for the KS5000, which is their 4x4 light and the largest of the series, and several things about the 5000 really impressed me. It's got a significantly larger footprint than most of its competition, but remains light and portable thanks to the hinge design, it uses best-in-class Samsung diodes, and ultimately performed really well in my testing. The KS3000 and KS2500 follow the same formula and are pretty much just scaled-down versions. They're actually both rated to flower a 3x3, but the 3000 is significantly larger and has a more powerful driver, so that's the one I'll be unboxing, building, and testing today. If we examine this little comparison graphic Viper Spectre produced, you see the massive difference in the size of this light compared to its competitors, and in this case, bigger is better. The dimensions of this thing are 32 by 32 inches. It nearly fills out an entire 3x3 tent, giving it excellent light distribution from the center of the space out to the corners and the edges. The footprint of the competition comes in at 24 inches by 24 inches at most in comparison, meaning the KS3000 is 33% longer in each dimension. The Samsung LM301H diodes this light uses are built specifically for horticulture applications and are rated at 3.1 micromoles per joule versus the 2.9 rating of the LM301B diodes that a lot of the other lights use. When you compare the best bin of both models of diodes, if you give each model the same amount of power, the LM301H will produce more photosynthetically active photons. In the box, you get some stickers, an instruction manual, a set of ratcheting rope hangers, an alternate AC plug, and three of these hanger kits two for the light and one to hang the driver if you choose. Here's the AC power cable for the driver and the driver itself. This is a Lifud branded unit, Lifud, 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 and is definitely not as nice looking as the driver you get with the KS5000. The frame uses the same hinged design and is very light. I really like the look of the KS frame and bars. Since the bars are part of the frame, it takes like 5 to 10 minutes to build this thing. I'm doing air quotes on the word build. Something I prefer about the KS3000 versus the 5000 is the fact that the driver has short little input and output cables on it with connectors. This allows you to attach a nice long AC cable to it if the one that you get in the kit is not long enough to reach an outlet. Even if you're remote mounting the KS5000 driver, the AC cable has a plug on it already and the cable's kind of short so you'd have to add an extension cord for more length. All that's required for assembly is to clip on the hangers and connect the driver. You can, of course, remote mount the driver outside the tent, or if you want to keep it inside, you can put one of the hanger kits on it and suspend it from the roof of your tent as well. On the 5000, I did a little test to see the difference in temperature inside the tent when you keep the driver in it versus outside of it, and I found that keeping the driver in the tent only resulted in a 0.2 degree Celsius increase over a few hours. I count 204 LM301H white diodes and 6 Osram 660 nanometer red diodes per bar, with 4 bars for a total of 816 white and 24 red diodes on the lamp. The white diodes are spread out and concentrated more toward the ends of each bar, and the bars themselves are spaced nearly equally from one another, with a very slightly larger gap in the center. The driver has a built-in dimming knob with 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100% positions. Unlike the 5000, the driver cannot be externally dimmed or daisy-chained. On to testing! At full power, after a 30 minute warm up, the driver pulled 300 watts from the wall, which works out to 33 watts of input power per square foot. The 75% setting measured 222 watts, 50% was 149 watts, and 25% was 73 watts. The frame and the driver run relatively cool, and you can comfortably hold your hand on either. The bars measured around 40 degrees Celsius in the warmest spots, and the case of the driver was a little bit warmer. You can see how well this frame fills out a 3x3 in my PPFD testing enclosure here. As I always do, I ran my automated PPFD test machine at hang heights of 6 inches to 36 inches at 2 inch increments and collected 289 measurements per height. All of this testing was done at 100% power, but it typically scales pretty well, so if you wanted to know what the light would read at 50% power, you can pretty much cut the measurements in half. For example, if the center measurement was 800 at 100% power, it'd be a touch over 400 at 50% power, or a little over 600 at 75% power. Let's check out some readings now. 
If you're struggling to see these on mobile, you can go to my website ppfdcharts.com to have a closer look where you get a higher resolution and you can zoom in on them. So starting at the lowest hang height of 6 inches, we've got some hot spots and you can see the orientation of the bars running top to bottom pretty clearly. The highest reading here was over 1200 micromoles per meter squared per second, which is an indication of how many photosynthetically active photons are hitting a square meter surface area beneath the light per second. Even though the light is hanging so low, the corners are still in the mid 500s impressively enough. As we move up through higher hang heights, the highest PPFD reading drops but the coverage uniformity increases and the distribution of the light evens out. At 8 inches, not a single reading falls below 500 and over 85% of the readings were above 700. For flowering with this light, you'll probably want to be in a hang height range of 12 to 16 inches or so. This range looks pretty good in terms of a trade-off between intensity and uniformity. Uniformity, which is simply the lowest reading divided by the highest reading, is at 79% here. 100% uniformity would mean that the lowest and highest reading were the very same value. Everything measures over 500 ppfd here, and 91% of the space read over 700, with no measurements breaking the 1000 mark. The average of all readings at 16 inches was 778, which is right in the sweet spot, and even the corners came in at the mid to high 600s. If you're not running CO2 in your grow, these numbers are solid. On a 1212 lighting schedule, an average PPFD of 778 translates to a DLI of about 34. If you're in veg, then Viper Spectra recommends a hang height of 24 inches at 75% power on the driver, so that'd be a good place to start, and if you find that's too much, then you can always just back the light off a little bit. Viper nailed it with these KSs, and I can't think of a better 3x3 light on the market right now. This thing fits the build perfectly. It looks sharp, it's light, compact, easy to build and hang, and most importantly, it puts up strong numbers with great uniformity. If I had to come up with a flaw for this light, it'd probably be the limitations of the driver since it can't be daisy chained or externally dimmed for those automation nerds out there like me or larger operations. But I doubt many people out there really care too much about this, and you can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. If you're after a new 3x3 light, this is my pick without a doubt. Thanks for watching everybody, and if you're interested, do me a solid and please consider subscribing for more LED and garden automation content, and we will see you on the next one.